The, the organization was formed in the early 1980s as a branch of the American Civil Defense Association, or TACTA. And they were devoted to civil defense at the time when we still had one, you know, nuclear defense, and they felt they needed a physician's group. And I found out about the meetings just because of, of Peter Beckman, who was the, the originator and first editor and publisher of Access to Energy. And he told me about the organization, and I don't think I've ever missed a meeting, but I took over the, the administrative responsibilities in 1989. Well, our goal is to make information available to the public about preparedness that could save lives in the event of all types of disaster, natural or man-made, terrorism, war, even nuclear war. We're probably one of, one of the few remaining sources of information about the effects of nuclear weapons and most importantly, how you can improve your chances of survival. Well, climate change has always been happening since the very beginning of the Earth, that there are huge natural forces involved in it. It's a very complex subject, atmospheric physics, that we're only beginning to understand. Certainly there are solar effects, there's the Pacific Decadal Oscillation, there are clouds, there are all kinds of phenomena that impact the climate. Human beings, of course, do have an effect on the climate. So probably land use effects, as Freeman Dyson points out, is probably the most important thing, you know, with clearing forests and growing crops and things of that, or there's a huge urban heat island effect. But this idea that there's this thermostat out there that you can twiddle by decreasing emissions of carbon dioxide is just it's just maybe the greatest scientific fraud of all ages. And people have been worried about these things since oh, early 20th century. And at first, we were going to run out of oil. So we're going to run out of uh, energy. And the solution to that was we needed to have a global energy rationing regime. Then there was a threat of a new ice age, and that was in the 1970s when we had cooling. And the solution to that was a global energy rationing bureaucracy. So then when that turned around and things started to warm up again, and they really started to warm up at the conclusion of the little ice age after George Washington was freezing to death at Valley Forge, and the solution to that is a global energy rationing regime. And the carbon dioxide, if we can control that, we can control everything. So I think that the really the motivation for that is the grab for power and influence and money and really taking advantage of people's abysmal scientific ignorance about the role of carbon dioxide, which is the most important comp compound on Earth as far as permitting life. Without carbon dioxide, everything would starve to death, as I think Patrick Moore pointed out so very well. We are very pro-nuclear, and in fact, it's one of the reasons that I got involved is because I'm very concerned about um, our need for nuclear energy. It's the most, it's the best source of large-scale generation of power. It's the safest, it's environmentally the most benign, it is um, the most econ economical. And so p part of my interest in DDP was because we were opposed to the the PSR anti-nuclear hysteria. You didn't well, and that's another reason for coming here is that the people are very intelligent. They are knowledgeable in a whole lot of different fields. They're very concerned about the future of our country. They're concerned about fighting against scientific misinformation because fear-mongering and getting people afraid of all the wrong things distract them from doing the preparations that they need to to preserve their lives in the event of disaster. Mm -hmm. But uh, do you think overall the future looks dark or bright or what, what is your view of the world? Well as uh, Edward Teller told us and he used to speak at our meetings, um, it is your duty to be an optimist because otherwise you don't do anything to change things, or to, to improve your chances.
Well, it's, it's an award given for contributions for our nation's defense. And it's been, been given to many very prominent scientists who contributed to our defense technology, uh, particularly the defensive side of, the, of nuclear weapon, weapons. Um, but also to people who have made contributions to, to preserve the United States as a free nation and President Trump for his great courage in getting us out of the Paris Climate Accords, which are really destructive to our economy, to our defense, to our, I mean, to our, I say, our intellectual standing, because if you have all kinds of people believing in a lie, he's the first person to have the courage to stand up against it who's been in political, political life. So I think it's, it's a huge contribution to our country to get us out of the Paris Accord and also to recognize the tremendous importance of access to energy. You know, that was Peter Beckman's newsletter that's still going on with Art Robinson now editing it, that Isaac Asimov recognized way back decades ago that the worst catastrophe of the things that were likely to happen is energy starvation. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that, that is its purpose, to make energy very, very expensive so that the common man cannot really afford to heat his house, to travel independently, to have a job that depends upon um, reliable, affordable electrical energy. And so, the, and really, it would end up reducing the population dramatically. And a lot of them believe and say as much that we need to have you know, five or six billion fewer human beings. And how do we achieve that? Most of them are out, out into going out and you know, actively killing them, but making it impossible for them to survive and thrive, um, reducing them to abject poverty, um, reducing their fertility is, is one way of gradually decreasing this human pestilence that's invading our planet. Where would hospitals be without reliable ventilators, lighting, climate control, infection control, space so that people aren't all crammed together sharing their germs? But there, there is a consortium of medical organizations that say that climate change is the worst threat to humanity. And the same doctors who were used to saying that nuclear energy was the greatest threat to humanity, or that we need to unilaterally disarm because nuclear war is the greatest threat to humanity. They just keep changing their topics, but the, but the threat is always the same. You know, we have too many humans, we, our technology is a threat, and we need more central control, more more government, it, it really is kind of a issues that kind of fit together. Well, we could please go to our website, ddponline.org. We have recordings of most of our past meetings. We're trying to make that a little more user-friendly. Uh, come to our annual conference. I think we're fighting against just some really, really destructive ideas such as this linear no threshold hypothesis. We didn't go into it here for one thing, one of our speakers couldn't come. That has crippled our nuclear industry, which is, is really the answer for affordable, safe, and environmentally friendly power. All of this bit about renewables is, is just wrong. I mean, it can't begin to replace the energy that we need for our industrial civilization. And it's so destructive of the environment, and it destroys the habitat in huge swaths of land. It maybe lasts 20 years, maybe less, and we're just going to have all this toxic waste that we don't know how to get rid of. How are we going to afford to take down those huge wind turbines? Yeah, well, I don't think that the wind ener energy has yet begun to generate as much energy as was required to build those things.